isn't this what most Australians think of when they think of Christmas? An open fire keeping you warm from the bitter winter outside, snow on the rooftops, a warm glass of eggnog. No, I don't think so. And I've never tried eggnog, but it doesn't sound good. For so many of us, Christmas is wrapped up in so many familiar layers of stuff. Stuff that never properly belonged to Christmas, so that it is possible for us to actually get Christmas wrong. One popular way we get Christmas wrong is to think that the story about Jesus' birth is just a nice story. A nice story for the kids. Who doesn't love a baby being born? I can't quite work out why we still make such a fuss about it, but at least it's a nice story. Well, the birth of Jesus has never been just a nice story. And it's certainly never been just a story for the kids. Around the time Jesus was born, a man called Zechariah, who had been given some information about what God was about to do, spoke or maybe sang the following words. You'll find them in the Bible. Praise be to the Lord, the God of Israel, because he has come to his people and redeemed them. He has raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David, as he said through his holy prophets of long ago. Salvation from our enemies and from the hands of all who hate us. To show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. The oath he swore to our father Abraham to rescue us from the hand of our enemies and to enable us to serve him without fear in holiness and in righteousness before him all our days. This story of the birth of Jesus is actually full of things we usually try and hide from children. It talks about redeeming and rescuing. The only people who need to be redeemed or rescued are those who are lost or in some kind of danger. It says that with the child about to be born, God has raised up a horn of salvation. A horn is a symbol of power, political power. Again, another thing we don't usually talk to kids about. It says God is rescuing his people from the enemies who hate them. This child will be God's fulfilment of his long-standing promises to rescue his people so that they can know and serve God without fear. If the Christmas story isn't for kids, and if it isn't even a nice story, it kind of makes you wonder why we didn't ditch it a long time ago. But we haven't. We wrap it up in all kinds of strange wrapping paper, reindeer, uh, a jolly fat man in red and way too much food and probably too many presents. But the story still hangs around. And I think that is because there are still enough people around who think that what old Zechariah said is still a real thing today. The kid grew up and he did what they said he would. He did have power. Not power like we see it today, power that means you have to stab every rival in the back just in order to keep it. But power just flowed out of him to fix things, to fix people, to change people. He used that power to rescue, to rescue people from their enemies. Now, when you're as good as I am with your fists, you make it your business not to have any enemies. But I have two big enemies, and they are scary. One's called Sin, and his ugly mate Death comes right along behind him. And Jesus said that he came to deal with my two biggest enemies, Sin and Death. I think that's why we still haven't been able to get rid of this story about the baby. But before you write it off as a nice story just for the kids, check again just to make sure that you haven't got Christmas wrong.